I did it all wrong. But building the internal developer platform, that one, I decided to create Git repositories using GitHub Actions that execute DevStream, which in turn convert templated repositories into new ones ready to be used by developers. Now, there is nothing terribly wrong with that. Or at least that's what I thought until one of you posted a comment asking, why didn't you do that through GitOps and Kubernetes controllers? That was the moment I realized that I applied the same logic I was using for quite a few years now. Create a pipeline that will execute some commands, which in turn will do something. That's imperative way of thinking. I run into the trap of applying past experience to solve problems without pausing for a second to think whether with all I know today, I could do better than I did in the past. It is a common issue. We often just do things instead of stopping for a moment to think whether we could improve. So instead of creating a pipeline that will do things for me, I should have declared the desired state, pushed it to Git and let the system take care of converting it into the actual state. If that logic applies to applications and services, like for example, databases, why not do the same for Git repositories? After all, if repos are in GitHub, they are effectively services we consume to GitHub's API. Today, we will correct my mistake. Today, I will show you how to manage Git repositories using GitOps. Sounds confusing that we need a Git repository where we'll define other repos. But bear with me, it will become clear very soon. I want to start working on a new application. So what do I do? I could create a new repository. I mean, that part is easy, but I need that repository to contain some initial files like bootstrapped source code with a, I don't know, hello world example. I might need a Docker file to build container images. I might need Kubernetes manifests that define how to run that application. I might need pipelines that will build container images and push them to a registry, run tests, make changes to manifests when creating a new release, and so on and so forth. You get the point, right? It's not about creating an empty Git repository, but creating a repository with everything required to work on an application. So what should I do? I could copy files from some other repo so that I don't write everything from scratch. But that is too time demanding and error prone. I would need to delete those files that I don't need, modify those that are different from what I should have, add a few that are missing, push the changes to the newly created repo, add a few secrets in case they're needed for GitHub Actions or whichever pipeline solution I might use, realize that I made a mistake, correct it, and so on and so forth. Now, given that I'm a freak about automation, I could create a script that will do those things for me and run it, for example, from GitHub Actions. Or I can forget about all that and use GitOps. I can just define that I need a repo and secrets and whatever else I might need and push it to the management repo. That's what we do with applications running in Kubernetes, and that's what we do with infrastructure managed by Crossplane. So why not do the same with Git repositories? Take a look at this. I will copy a file into the directory monitored by Argo CD and add, commit, and push the change. Then I will wait for a few moments and voila! I got the Git repository with startup files created and modified with specifics about the new application. I even got the secret that I will need for reasons I will not go into right now. Isn't it simple and useful to anyone who might need to start working on a new app? Isn't it something you might want to add to your internal developer platform so that anyone can easily bootstrap a new project? I'll assume that you just said Yes! So let's take a look at how you can do this yourself. There are a couple of ingredients required for us to manage Git repositories using GitOps tools like Flux, or in this case, Argo CD. There are obvious things like, well, 
Argo CD or Flux. We also need a Git repository where we will store the desired state. We all know that part. We also know that those tools, Argo CD or Flux, work only and exclusively with Kubernetes resources. So we need a cluster which I'll call Control Plane. Control Plane, in turn, should manage any type of resources, be it those in other Kubernetes clusters, or AWS, or Azure, or Google Cloud, or anything else. And that's where Crossplane comes in. That was obvious, wasn't it? What is little less obvious is that Crossplane is not a tool we can use to manage only AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud resources. Far from it, we can manage everything with Crossplane as long as there is a provider for that something. Given that I want to manage GitHub resources, natural next step would be to check whether there is a GitHub provider and luckily for me, there is one in the Upbound marketplace. We can use it to manage GitHub Actions secrets, branches, pull requests, repositories, files in repositories, and so on and so forth. Now, I would not want to define those things over and over and over again. Instead, I want to give it to everyone in my organization so that they can create new repositories with all the required files and secrets and whatever else they might need. So, I created a Helm chart with three templates. The first one is repository. That's very obviously essentially defines a repository that will be managed by Crossplane. Then there is a list of files that should be added to that repository. For example, there is Docker file with dynamic parts gathered through values. Those files will be added to the repository identified through labels. Then there are action secrets which will be created from Kubernetes secrets. Finally, I have Helm chart values file that allow me to customize each repo without creating a whole new set of files. That Helm chart can be used for all new repositories we will create in the future. By the way, if you want to reproduce what I'm doing, the link to the gist with all the commands, scripts, and references is in the description. Now comes the important part, defined in the Crossplane GitHub demo repo file. So let's take a look at it. Here I have Argo CD application that references that Helm chart together with parameters that can be used to customize the repo and its content. Here, for example, I'm defining the name of the repo and the application and uh, the host through which the application should be accessible. And AWS is the hyperscaler where the database should be running. And that's it. That's the only thing I would need to write. I can even remove the part of writing YAML from the equation and have it created by clicking a button in port or backstage. I won't do that today. We'll stick with the terminal and just copy the file to the infra directory. Argo CD is already set up to monitor the directory, so all I have to do now is add, commit, and push that file. Now, let's see what Argo CD thinks about that push. Look at that. Argo CD converted the Helm chart into Kubernetes resources and applied them to the control plane cluster. Those are cross-plane managed resources we can observe the same by retrieving them from the terminal as well. There we go. The resources are there, synced by Argo CD, and Crossplane communicated with GitHub and created the repo, the files, and the secret. Still don't believe me? Let's take a look at the newly created repository. You can see that the files are there and they have the correct values. For example, Dockerfile builds a binary called Crossplane GitHub Demo, which happens to be one of the values we specified, you know, Helm chart values. Similarly, if I open Action Secrets, we can see that kubeconfig previews is there as well. And that's it. All that's left for you to do is add that as a screen in your favorite internal developer platform UI, like Backstage, Port, or whichever other solution you might have chosen. From there on, it's only a click away. Oh, and there is one more thing I should mention. This video was a preparation for something much bigger. You told me that you'd like me to expand on the internal developer platform video and that's what I'm doing right now, even though it might not be so or as obvious. One of the things we did today will be critical for what we will do when we start building preview environments as part of an IDP. Actually, there is one more thing. I learned that IDP is not a good acronym for internal developer platform since IDP is used to say identity provider. However, I don't have a better synonym, so if you heard someone using a different one, I would be grateful to find out what that one is in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.